Hi friends, welcome back to my DNA Talks. In today's session, I would like to throw some more light on the entity relationship diagram. I would like to discuss on the entities, attributes, relationship, entity relationship model, entity relationship notations, entity relationship diagram, and how you represent entities and attributes using information engineering notation and add of 1x notation and some of the other types of relations like identifying, non-identifying, super types, subtypes and so on. These are some of the concepts that we should know before we do a proper data modeling. Let's start. First and foremost, let me ask, what is an entity? I know most of you already know what is an entity. An object that exists in itself is an entity. Entity can be anything, person, place, object, resource, concept, event or activity, anything about which data is collected. Customer, department, payment, student, subject, product, employee, doctor, drug, lecturer, it can be anything. Starting point of any data modeling is entity. The identification of the entity is the task that we all carry out before we do the proper data modeling. Okay. Next comes attributes. Of course, my next question is what is attributes? in relation to an entity. Attributes are the characteristics of entity, describes an entity, gives meaning to an entity. What is attribute? A quality or characteristics of an entity is referred to as an attribute. An entity can have as many properties as it wants. One of the attributes is considered as primary key. Attributes are expressed in an elliptical shape in an entity relationship model. Going further, let's have more closer look at the entities and attributes. Let's take one or two entities and explore what are, what are their attributes. Let's take customer. Yes, customer has a customer ID and customer name, gender, phone number, email. And take a student. A student has a student ID, student name, date of birth, phone number, email. Similarly, an employee will have employee name, employee ID, employee date of joining, employee date of birth and so on. So what is important is one of the attribute will be a primary key. Primary key is the identifier of that entity. For customer, customer ID is the primary key. For department, department ID is the primary key. For a doctor, doctor ID is the primary key. And we have non-primary keys like customer name, date of birth, gender, phone number, email, etc. So in short, attribute is a characteristics of entity which describes an entity, gives an identification, maybe using a primary key. Let's move on. So when we have many entities and that are related entities, we try to make associations. That is where the concept of entity relationship comes up. So what is a entity relationship? It is association between many entities, association among one or more entities. For example, an employee instance 
reporting to another employee instance. We call them supervisors. What does it do? An employee report to another employee who is a supervisor. That is kind of relationship. Okay. Each employee belongs to a department. That is another kind of relationship. And relationship can be among multiple entities. Look at this scenario. We have a customer. We have a technician. We have a work item. And we have a location. And we have work assignment. Here what is happening? A technician is assigned on a work item for a customer at a location. This work assignment can be a relation as well as an entity. So in short, what is an entity relationship? It is nothing but an association among one or more entities and that association has varying scope. That association has varying scope that we can see later on. So if you quickly look at some of the benefits of an ERD, it adopts the natural view that the real world consists of entities and relationship. It incorporates some of the important semantic information about the real world. It includes a special diagrammatic technique as a tool for database design. And it is a graphical representation of entities and their relations. When you understand that ER diagram is a tool for database modeling that shows entities, attributes and relationship, it is also important to understand how they are being represented in those diagrams. There are different types of ER diagram notations. Maybe some of them are Chen, Close Food, OMT, IDF, Batchman and UML. As you see, there are different things to represent. We have multiplicities, we have attributes, we have associations. Right? Take an example. We have to represent a multiplicity 0 or 1. How this is represented in information engineering notation? See, they have 0, then a line, then the entity is represented as rectangle. And the same is represented in Barker notation with a different style. And in add of 1x, another style. And UML, another style. And is there any specific rule that we should use like this? No. Some people prefer one notation over another based on their intuition or preference. So please keep this in mind that ER diagrams are represented using different notations and some of them are information engineering notation, IDA Phonex, Barker notation, UML notation, etc. And which is the most popular notation in ER diagram? It is nothing but information engineering notation. I am sure that you must be very much interested in to see how these various notations are being used in entity relationship diagram. First of all, we will see how information engineering notation is being used. As I already mentioned, the most popular notation in ER diagram is information engineering notation. Also, it is called a crow foot notation. The entity is denoted by a rectangle. The rectangle is divided into two parts, the entity name at the top and the entity attributes at the lower portion of it. And you can see how a customer is related to a order, right? A customer can place many orders, right? And many orders are being placed by customer. 
and see how this is being represented using the information engineering notation okay the next one which we are going to see is the id of 1x notation the same entry relationship model is being represented using id of 1 notation here see there is no more crop food notation it has a, its own notation here right and the customer places orders and orders are being placed by customer and an order has multiple order line items right so this is how an entity relationship model is represented by an id of 1x notation just for more clarity we can discuss one more relationship one more association of parent and child look at this example here we have parent and child a parent may have zero one or many children how this is being represented and a child may have one or zero parent a child may have one or zero parent and another association a parent may have zero one or many children a child must have one parent see this notation this notation represent must have and another one a parent may have zero or one child may have zero or one child and a child must have one parent this is a mandatory constraint and if you look at another one a parent can have many children a parent can have many children and a child can have many parents a child can have many parents that is represented many to many relationship a many to many relationship can only be shown logically a third table in between them called a junction table is required to physically implement a many to many relationship three tables are required to implement a many to many relationship in short hope you understand little more about these associations okay Another topic which I would like to discuss is the type of relationship like identifying relationship and non-identifying relationship. Here you see an employee and a permanent employee and a contract employee and external organization. So we have three, four entities. So what type of relationship what you see from employee to permanent employee? Okay. It is an identifying relationship. Why? The logical relationship is that the child cannot exist without parent and a permanent employee cannot exist without the parent employee entity. In database, the existence of a row in a child table depends on the row in a parent table. The employee ID from the employee table becomes a foreign key as well as a primary key in the permanent employee table. If you look at this permanent employee, you see an employee ID which is a foreign key of the employee entity has become the primary key. That means a permanent employee cannot exist unless there is an employee exists in the parent table. And you see the soft side of this edge. Okay, it represents that it is a weak entity that depends on other entity for its existence. So what is an identifying entity? Identifying relationship. It is a relationship that represents a child cannot exist without the parent. Okay? Hope you understand. Let's move on. 
so here comes the non identifying relationship earlier we said about the regarding the permanent employee we said that is an identifying relationship but coming to a contract employee a contract employee can be or cannot be part of an external organization right here you see the contract employee the external organization id is a foreign key but that is not a primary key this contract employee can exist even if he or she is not part of an external organization it can allow null it can allow null values so that is where the non identifying relationship comes into picture and non identifying relationship can be optional or mandatory which means the foreign key column allows null or this allows null respectively we can employ contract and permanent contract employee has connection to an external organization and he can also not being connected to external organization so that kind of relationship is called non identifying relationship as we have already seen about the many to many relationship and in many to many relationship you know the entities can be associated in multiple ways a user can have multiple roles and multiple roles can be assigned to multiple users and so on we already discussed that and we already said that we should introduce a third entity to implement this many to many relationship in real time so take the example of user and role and we brought an user role assignment to uh, implement this many to many relationship among the user role uh, in in a, in a practical or real scenario and there is another interesting uh, relationship type is recursive we already said uh, already said that you no know, the one of the employee instance is reporting to another employee instance again that is kind of a supervisor relationship and entity relationship model tools really support us to create this recursive relationship and we will see that in detail when we go through the erwin tool implementation part yes our last topic is super type and the sub type relationship you know take example of full time employee and a part time employee if you see them individually or separately you will see that full time employee has 90% of the attributes common to part time employee maybe one or two attributes are different specific to full time and specific to part time is it good idea to maintain this two entities with all these common attributes or can i take out the common attributes and build a super type and have a sub types that is a question in that case what we can do is we can have we can have an employee type a super type and we can have a part time and full time with just the specific attributes required for each of them and we can differentiate using an employee type attribute right this type of relationship is what is called super type and sub type with this i am going to close today's d and a talk hope this was really useful please like and share look for more exciting videos at learn with biju thank you